John, wake up. What is it? Next door, I heard a scream. Stay here. Or check it out. John? Is everything all right? Oh my God, they're covered in blood. Go back inside. It's not mine. It's not. Go back inside and call an ambulance right now. Go! Of course, this is about a possessed demonic doll, mm -hmm. but I imagine as actors, it was easy to connect with the story because it's rooted in some very real themes. You know, early on, you have mention of the Tate LaBianca murders that had kind of just happened mm -hmm. at the end of the 60s. So did that help you craft the characters? Um, definitely. When I when I read the script and I knew it was set in you know late 60s, early 70s, I was really interested about you know, researching into kind of Los Angeles at the time. Yes. There was, you know, the Manson, it was the Manson era. There was also um, like Vietnam going on. There were so many social changes happening. And I was, I really thought how interesting it must be for a couple moving through a time like that. And, and the pressures of those, those social changes. And um, yeah, I just found it really interesting that, you know, like that all applies to, to, yeah. to what a truth there you know because mm -hmm. as an actor you want to stem from some kind of truth you want to attach yourself to some form of reality and i think there was a lot to play with at the time and especially mm -hmm. in los angeles yeah. yeah no i think and i think the time period definitely for me had played a big role in just being able to kind of get into the character and get into you know the environment that's going on you know we um you know, as actors, yes, the Annabelle doll is the scary, very scary part of it. But for us, it was more of like a connection between the two of us and and, yeah. and starting this little family together. And, and uh, you know, and I think that our, the creative team allowed us to really do that. And I think that's what the audience hopefully is going to connect with. Just this family just starting out and going through everything that's going on, you know, during the time and then you know, with this doll. It's really interesting the way, the different way that both your characters react to the fact that times are changing. Mm -hmm. You have to remind, Mia has to remind John to lock mm -hmm. the door. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that. She sort of has an instinct mm -hmm. about what's going on and you're kind of ignoring it yeah. to well, I, mean, I, I think that there's, the maternal instinct is is so present in, in Mia at that time. She's pregnant and she's you know, she she wants to. She's going to do whatever she can to protect her her child, yeah. and and I think you know, uh, John's a little late to the party as far as that goes. He, um, you know, he's also a doctor. You know, he sees things in black and white, and uh, so you know, when this Annabelle thing happens and all of this is going on with her, you know, he he he's, he wants to support his wife completely, and he believes her that something's going on, but. You know, he also wonders, he, he makes a comment about postpartum. He wonders if there's something more going on inside of her that's, and then actually this stuff maybe isn't happening because he doesn't see it for a while. It takes him yeah. a little time before he actually sees evidence of what's going on. And as a doctor, he needs to see the evidence before he'll yes. kind of agree, you know, and understand it. And, and he eventually does. Um, but it's not for not believing her. It's not for, you know, wanting to support her because he does. Yeah. I, I think it's an interesting time. Like Mia, what I wanted to, to make sure was kind of evident from the start was that she was slightly removed, that she went in every context, she was maybe more observant, more quiet, more um, introvert. And I think that for me, it was very much that she had kind of a second sense of something rumbling within her, you know, and I, and I do believe that there are people who, who sense different energies and things like that. And I, I think that she, was almost in, in denial of that. And, and um, I, th I think if you are someone who is sensitive in that way, you can't deny it. It, 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 it finds you in the end. I don't particularly think what you're experiencing is the ghost of that girl. Why not? Well, ghosts haunt specific places, usually where something terrible has happened, like your old house. We moved it. It's still happening. Which is why I don't think it's a ghost. But now that cult, you said that they were trying to summon something. From what I've read in the past, these cults, they don't summon ghosts. They summon inhuman spirits. Something that's never existed in the flesh. What I think these films that James Wan has produced and directed 
have in common is the fact that there are strong female characters at the center. They're vividly constructed, and also they form these powerful relationships with one another, which is a rare thing to see on screen, and that's gotten a, a lot of attention as of late. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering what it means to you to sort of be a part of this world now. Well, you know what? I hadn't thought about that, but yes. now that you say <laughs> that, that's that's very interesting. I'm gonna. I'll look at it in a different mm -hmm. way now, but um, I just know that uh, I was attracted to this, first of all, because of the genre, and nobody's ever asked me to do the, the, the genre. And I knew Leonetti's work as a cinematographer, so I was uh, excited to work with him as a director. And then I met, so I read the script, and I kind of go, oh. <laughs> <laughs> And then I met Annabelle Wallace, mm -hmm. and she is lovely. Yeah. And even when we were reading, we sat next to each other for the first read through. We were reading, reading, and we were like, oh my God, oh my God. And so most people in the room were just reading or listening. But I, we had a bond right off because just the words and the situations, you know, sparked an emotional reaction in us. And so I knew I had a simpatico actor to mm -hmm. act with. And, um, and we, we worked well together. We played well together and um, I think it was very easy for me to, to, to my character Evelyn yes. to establish a relationship, an unusual relationship, a relationship you may not want to have with someone. Uh, in the in the film. And Evelyn's backstory is so rich. Yeah. I'm sure it was helpful for you to connect to these very real themes about motherhood and love. That's what separates a paranormal thriller from a slasher gore movie. And I think it's, you know, and those have their place, but I think this type of film attracts uh, people who want complexity, mm -hmm. they want reality, and then they want you to scare the hell out of them. <laughs> so it makes it even yeah. scarier if it's based out of, if it feels like it could be you or somebody you know, mm -hmm. then that's when it's delicious. Nobody knows Freddy Krueger, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, you know, and he's fine and that's great, but mm -hmm. you can detach yourself a little. This is like, oh God, I'm gonna be thinking about this for the next mm -hmm. month. <laughs>